we like working with the family. We like working with the kids. Uh, it's the system uh, that makes it difficult for, it could be for parents getting access to services, services being provided. We had a heavy emphasis on detaining kids in the juvenile hall. And so we stepped forward with this model, our DDAP program, and uh, we selected out, truly selected out, those kids who would be detained. We knew we were going to be detained. In fact, we, we, we targeted the kids that were recommended for detention, something that hadn't been done before. And then we'd go back in front of the judge and argue for the kids released to our custody, so another thing that had never been done before. And, uh, and that was started in 1993. It's now recognized as a national model we've replicated in five sites around the country. That was a, a non-traditional approach. It was an innovation that uh, I dare say if we hadn't been around, it wouldn't have happened. Providing an alternative plan uh, allows a kid to receive services or utilize the services that, that, that are out, out in the community. Um, and that entails working with the the child, addressing the criminal conduct behavior, uh, also uh, reaching out to the families and the home and siblings, and the whole child and family. The client gets to decide, you know, what makes their life worth living, and then we get to align with them on that goal, right? And then we get to, you know, figure out what's getting in the way of them um, reaching that goal. It's about getting the kids to be able to identify, you know, where the triggers are, identify when things start, you know, because you can intervene up here on the chain a lot better than you can here. Our success rate was out of 152, 85% completed the program, didn't, didn't reoffend, and or, you know, moved on. Uh, one of the problems is that kids are jumping from programs to programs to programs. There's no consistency. So we hope that to catch these kids that are coming out of home placement, that we've worked with, that when they come out, it's the same people that we're, they're working with. What I know from what I hear from the client is, like, it's a system, it's a system, it's a system. I'm just working with the individual. Most I can do is sort of educate them, you know, about the system and, and then, you know, and, and teach them skills and do all that sort of stuff and try and, you know, address some of the problems individually. But I, I know that without addressing the whole system, it's going to be really hard for that that client to make um, sustained changes uh, while they're still in that context. There's been a shift in sentiment both at the in the leadership of the probation department for sure um, and I think among the judges and I think that those pieces the district attorney's office, uh, the public defender's office, and the community I think here in San Francisco I think what we've had is a unique confluence of all of the of opinion, unique confluence of opinion as to what the juvenile justice system should be doing. And as a result, I think that um, there, no, there, we don't have the polarization in thought that you often see elsewhere.